Morning. Hi, Nadine. Hello. So if you just want to introduce yourself to the students, let them know a bit about your role in the company that you work for. OK. Hi, everyone. My name's Helen Seacroft. I'm a nurse working for Sherwood Forest Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust. And I work in Kings Mill Hospital in Sutton and Ashfield. Um, my title is Advanced Clinical Practitioner and also Corporate Lead for Advanced Practice. So I have two jobs uh, when I'm working at Kings Mill Hospital. So an Advanced Clinical Practitioner is a registered professional um, other than a doctor who has done additional training to work as part of the medical team um, as a clinical decision maker. So I qualified as a nurse. I've been a nurse for about 18 years. And then my career has progressed for me to be an advanced clinical practitioner. And I've, to do that, achieved a master's in advanced practice. Okay. So what does your role kind of entail then as an advanced practitioner? What <laughs> differentiates you between a nurse and somebody who is more advanced? So I've done the extra training. So I've done a master's in advanced clinical practice um, through Derby University. And I have additional skills to that as a, of a registered nurse. So for example, I can take a history from a patient. I can examine a patient. I can request investigations such as blood tests, x-rays, CT scans, um, other kind of investigations that will help us reach a clinical diagnosis mm -hmm. and interpret those investigations as well and then make a clinical plan that might be forming a diagnosis or if I can't reach a diagnosis it might be referring on to another specialty or another team or another professional to help me and help the patient get to that point. Okay so your second role <laughs> Um, was that that's the nursing role, isn't it? Yeah, so that's the so my first role is the advanced clinical practitioner role. Yeah. And then my second role is the lead for advanced practice in the organization that I work for. OK, so tell me a bit about the lead role that you have. <laughs> so advanced clinical practitioners are relatively new in terms of career pathways within the NHS. Um, they've probably been around for about, I don't know, 15, sort of 10 to 15 years. Um, but it's only very recently that we've started to have proper pathways for our progression. So I've been employed as the lead in Sherwood Forest Hospitals to progress that career pathway. So that's recruiting more advanced clinical practitioners ensuring that their training is adequate and that they're well supported in the clinical setting and ensure that we've got good governance frameworks, for example, competency packs, training packs, supervision packs to make sure that they're supported in their practice. Okay, that sounds good. So take me back to the start of your career. So you've been the nurse for 18 years. What things did you study kind of at college leading up to now? <laughs> Um, so when I finished my GCSEs, um, I had to make sure that I had a C in maths and English, which I got, thankfully. I then went on to do an advanced GMVQ in health and social care. Um, I chose this over A-levels because I liked the vocational aspect, um, the practice placements, the more coursework-based element of the study, rather than the sort of more traditional A-level route. Um, so I did my advanced GMVQ in health and social care, and then I was able to go on to university and start a bachelor's in nursing degree. So straight from college, I went to university and did the four year degree in nursing. OK, so had you intended always to be a nurse then or did you kind of stumble into it? Um, when I when I was 16 and left school, it was a toss up between pursuing an art route or nursing route and I went down the nursing route so there was a bit of but I find that because the nursing career is so varied there are opportunities to explore other sort of avenues within your own sort of you know career pathway so for example as a nurse for example working in a mental health setting art is used quite a lot so you know I, that wasn't 
the route for me, I went into emergency nursing and worked in A&E, but there is the opportunity to explore lots of different elements within the nursing career. Okay, so what kind of other roles are there within nursing and within kind of the organisation? So, I mean, it, it's huge. So nursing in itself is vast. Um, I work in A&E, um, but there are, there are so many. So you can, it's, you can do children's nursing, mental health learning, nursing, learning disability nursing. And then within that, nursing can be purely clinically focused or there's the opportunity to progress into management or leadership roles. There's the opportunity to progress into education, whether that's teaching within a clinical setting, for example, in the hospital, or whether that's teaching at a college or a university, or there's opportunities to get involved in research. So in terms of career opportunities, it's a fantastic career enable, that enables you to broaden and explore all sorts of different career opportunities. Okay, that sounds good. So is it quite an easy kind of place? So the hospital is it easy to kind of move within? Um, yeah, my career has been really varied. I haven't always worked at Kings Mill. So I started working down in South Wales. Um, and then I spent some time working abroad. So I worked in Australia, um, which was fantastic. I was able to work in Sydney. So my UK nursing registration allowed me to work in Sydney and Perth. I also spent some time working in the outback with the Aboriginal community, running a clinic out there, which was fascinating, really interesting. Um, and then I came back to the UK and picked up my nursing registration again. And then I start, that's when I started to pursue my career as an advanced clinical practitioner. So there are so many opportunities available um, for somebody that wants to progress and expand their career and get a variety of different roles. Mm -hmm been involved in education so I was a resuscitation officer for a year so I was delivering resuscitation training like basic life support and um, to the nurses and some of the other allied healthcare professionals within the hospital I was then able to also get involved with the hospital at night teams so that's a team of medical and nursing staff that look after patients purely at night and that's where I started to get interested in the advanced clinical practitioner role taking on those extra skills to look after the patients. So just out of interest, what made you go to Australia? <laughs> um, just, just the opportunity because, because you can, with the UK nursing registration, you can work in many different places across the world. Um, also the sunshine and the fabulous weather. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was an appeal. Um, and just the opportunity to travel when I was younger and I had a fantastic time, made friends over there, um, learn a different way of working and a different way of nursing and different skills. And I've been able to bring that back to the UK and enhance my own practice over here. Yeah, that sounds good. So was it kind of easier or harder than you expected to get to this stage in your career? Um, I don't know, really. It's just been so varied. Yeah. There are some people that will take a job in a hospital and stay in that hospital for the whole of their career and progress. I've been somebody that's moved around and taken different opportunities. I would say the hardest thing that I've just done is finish the masters in advanced practice. That was really, really tough, um, particularly because it was a good few years from completing my degree to having to study again and get my head down. Uh, but it was definitely worth it and it's definitely enhanced my practice now as an advanced clinical practitioner. Okay, so definitely useful to do the extra training and the additional learning. Absolutely, yeah. And it's able to it's enable me to give me better care to the patients as well. Mm -hmm. Have you got any tips of uh, for the students in terms of like pursuing a career in your type of field? Um, I would say, um, you know, start off by having conversations with people that are in, in the field, um, whether that's, you know, nurses or physios or anybody in a healthcare capacity, get as much information as you can, uh, you know, do some research, whether that's chatting to people, whether you're lucky enough to get a work placement or some kind of work experience. Mm -hmm explore the different roles that are out there if it's something that you're interested in um 
so yeah it's just get get information to enable you to make a decision about what you want to do really yeah, exactly is there anything you'd have done differently throughout the course of your career um, really i don't think so um i don't i'm not somebody that looks back and thinks oh i wish i'd done this and i wish i'd done that um i just take it as it comes um, if there's been opportunities, I've gone for those opportunities. Yeah. So I started off working in A&E as a, as a junior staff nurse, and I worked my way up to sister level, where I was taking charge of the A&E department. And then the opportunity to work abroad came, so that's why I went to Australia. Then the opportunity to be a, a nurse practitioner came, so that's what I've done. So, yeah, probably one thing is just keep looking forward and, and not look back and you know, dwell. If it doesn't quite go right, um, when you first thought, just keep trying. So, there's so many opportunities and so many different routes into nursing now um, that it, you know, it doesn't have to be one size fits all. Yeah. There's different routes to get to where you want to be. Exactly. Just out of interest as well, did the opportunities present themselves to you or did you go looking for them? Um, both really. So there's some occasions, particularly in the hospital, and, or other hospitals where I've worked, where there's opportunities for a promotion, um, whether that's sort of a, the more traditional route where you start off as a nurse and then you work your way through into sort of a management and leadership role, or it might be to get involved in a particular project. Um, so with the um, progress in um, technology, there's a lot of um, now nursing staff getting involved in um, the development of technology to support their practice. So, for example, electronic observation recording and things like that. Um, so if you have a particular interest in technology and you're very tech savvy, you can, um, you know, you can get involved in that alongside your normal nursing um, work, so the, like the clinical work. Um, or, you know, the other thing, I was particularly interested in being a nurse practitioner. So I started to explore that and I had to do that off my own back, as it were. So I started looking online, looking at courses, looking at the entry requirements. So I'd say a bit of both. Yeah, OK. Are there any resources that you can point the students in the direction to, whether that be kind of books, websites, podcasts, anything like that that's going to help them in terms of their development? Um, so there's the NHS Employers website. So um, there's a lot of stuff on there about being an advanced clinical practitioner. There's also the NHS Health Careers website. Um, obviously, there's the organisational website, so the Royal College of Nursing, if you're particularly interested in nursing, or sort of the Chartered Society of Physiotherapists, or the College of Paramedics. Um, so there's those kind of websites, or the registering body. So for me, that's the Nursing and Midwifery Council, or if you're an allied health professional, it's the HCPC as well. So they all have lots of good information about starting in a, as a, a career in, in health and also how you can progress within that framework as well. Okay, so some good stuff out there. Yeah. I, I didn't ask you that's going to be useful. Okay. What is a typical day like for you? <clears throat> um, really varied. So my role currently involves some non-clinical time, which is where I do the lead post for the advanced clinical practitioners and also clinical time in ED. So this week, for example, today and tomorrow, I'm in the office. On Wednesday, I'm working a clinical shift in A&E. Thursday, I've got a study day where I'm learning about um, caring for paediatrics. Mm -hmm. Friday, I'm clinical again. So it's really varied. And I think that's part of the appeal of nursing is um, the variety of, of things that the role can entail. Okay, well, that's a lot of information, <laughs> which is really, really good. I don't want to ask you any more questions. I think you've given okay. me of insight, to be honest, into what it is that you do and a lot of material for the students to go away and kind of do a bit more research and digging with. So thank you so much for speaking to me. Okay, you're welcome. I really appreciate it. Okay, thanks, Nadine. So thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.